What I have right here is this is a uh, clone of a Fender 5E3, a uh, little tweed champ. Uh, this was custom built uh, right here on my workbench uh, over Easter. Um, I threw it together after working on the uh, 1960 Princeton that was there. And right now I'm just kind of doing a little bit of troubleshooting on it because it's got some weird oscillations that are happening. Um, and so I've got through a scope and I'm just looking at various things. And one of the things that we can see is that I've got this right now at uh, the volume on the normal channel is set at about 3. Um, we're pushing about 16.2 volts AC into an 8 ohm load. Um, you can see on the scope that we've got almost a perfectly uh, nice sine wave. I'm injecting a 60 hertz sine wave right into the input, uh, so it's all continuous. Um, the levels are right there. On the scope, you can see I have both of the probes hooked up on either side of the phase inverter. So this is showing that we're getting a pretty good signal going to both tubes. But one of the cool things, and what's kind of legendary about the 5E3, is that there's an interesting interplay that happens between the two volume controls. And I just wanted to kind of show that real quick. And so what's happening is, I'll turn this down. So this, the volume is all, all the way off. The little purple line that you see going in, in the background on the scope is actually a, uh, a fast Fourier transform that's happening that's analyzing the signals that's coming across on channel one looking for any type of distortion or anything like that. So that you really don't have to pay attention to. But as I turn up the volume, I'm right at about the volume of two. So I'm at three volts coming across, just slightly edging it up, just past two. I'm at 10 volts. You can see how the sine waves are growing growing, growing, growing. I'm at three right now. By about four, I'm at almost 18 volts. As I get to seven, I'm at 19. You can see the sine waves are still climbing. Right now I'm right at 10. Between um, about nine and a half, I'm at 20.4 volts. As you watch, if as I increase the volume knob, you can see I'm starting to get a little bit of distortion right at the top. And you can see right in that area right there, you can see that that first phase inverter is giving just a little bit of distortion. And that's how we can see where it's starting to really break up. And it's not a real symmetric breakup either. You can see where the second trace is still real nice. The yellow one is clipping in an odd way. So now, what's interesting about the 5E3 is when I start bringing up the volume on the bright channel, as I start getting this up, right around to about 10, you can see that I'm actually decreasing the sine wave and the volume on the amp itself and bring it way down. When I bring this all the way up to 12, I'm now up about where I was previously, where I was right around at nine and a half or so on the main volume. So I have both volumes up. I've actually decreased the volume and brought back up. And this is something that's actually part of the overall design and the workings of the 5E3. And the reason that these things are so kind of sensitive 
because both of the channels work together and their volumes kind of modify each other just in a very interactive and different way. So kind of just an interesting little, little experiment here. And that is the Fender 5E3 that's on the bench right now.